agriculture contributes 27 percent of our gdp employs 70 percent of the rural people and yet only four percent of mainstream finance and so addressing that was addressing the needs of 2 million smallholder dairy farmers, primarily traditional farmers. They keep very traditional or local breeds, which produce very little milk. And so the irony is that a farmer would actually be keeping seven heads of cattle, all local breeds, and would only be producing around three liters of milk. And so we step in and reason that. Why don't you keep only one or two cows and each of them producing, say, eight liters of milk? And so the first thing was to introduce an enabling environment that these people could have a cultural shift from traditional dairy farming to commercial dairy farming and get a return that can help you in your household needs and the value of that cow will be repaid over a period of 12 months. I am a city boy. To the extent that my wife still likes to laugh and tell a story about the time while on a cross-country drive that I woke up alarmed by the sounds coming from outside our cottage. This was in rural South Africa, mind you, so in my mind at least it could have been any number of wild beasts, except it was a herd of cows. I'd forgotten we'd stopped at a cattle farm, and it turns out that kids' books have greatly simplified the true situation. Cows do not gently moo. So perhaps I learned more than most in my conversation with Alan Tolo of MyFugo, much more than just a Kenyan agri-lender. But whether you know your farmyard animals better than I do, or not, You can't help but be inspired by the business model. Welcome to How to Lend Money to Strangers with Brendan LaGrange. This is now my 38th episode of the show and in that time I've gotten excited about mortgages as a tool for wealth creation, Ivy League student loans as a route to well-paying international careers, and SME loans as a route to economic progress. But MyFugo is probably the best representation I've seen to date of the benefit that credit can bring to previously underserved markets. Not content to lend money and collect, Alan and his team are helping subsistence dairy farmers to use that money to its full potential, modernizing Kenya's agricultural sector as they do, one carefully chosen, well-looked-after and conveniently funded cow at a time. You would have heard them mentioned in episode 24 on Confirm You. Now's our chance to deep dive. Alan, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. We've obviously worked together a little bit and we'll get into how in a minute. But before we do, could we maybe start with your background, who you are and what has brought you to this point in your career? Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here and considered to be part of this podcast, privilege that we don't take for granted. It's a nice opportunity to tell people about what we do and smart agriculture as a whole. My name is Alan Tolo. I am the CEO of Mifugo. I have a background in IT for the last 20 years. I've worked in several companies, uh, in SureTech, FMCG, and a financial aggregation company. And all through my past, I've been able to support various domains and dimensions in terms of having enabling systems that help any type of work. If you talk about financial services, then you're talking about implementing systems that uh, bring the money closer to the people, convenience, and easy-to-use applications. Uh, If you're talking about insurtech, data, to help address the insurance needs of the people. And of course, if you're talking about an FMCG, it's all about goods and products and how you use IT to market it, easy go-to-market channels. And so two, uh, three years ago, 
I then decided to start Mifugo. This was merely by chance because what happened is that I wanted to start a dairy farm and looked around for good IT solutions that would help in record keeping, managing the farm. And uh, I was not impressed by what I saw. And instead, I decided to start my own company that would serve people in terms of an application that helps in record keeping and managing of their dairy cows. The, the classic entrepreneur story where you experienced the problem yourself and, and went out to solve it and use that to, to build a business. You know, you talked about FMCG, insurance, all the sort of things you associate with the big city, and now you're in agriculture. So I guess how did you take that decision to move out of the sort of corporate world? At that time, I looked around and there were many solutions coming up in financial services. There were many in insure tech, but agriculture, ironically, had very few people attempting to make a change, especially using IT uh, to make it grow. Our statistics show that agriculture contributes 27% of our GDP, employs 70% of the rural people, and yet only 4% of mainstream finance goes to the same agriculture. And so there was a clear need to address the lack of credit to agriculture and also to address the need for technological solutions to help in accelerating productivity and definitely uh, profitability. Uh, finally, agriculture by its own way is based in the rural sectors. And so anyone solving or getting involved in any part of the value chain would have to work with the rural folk. And so we, we ended up identifying dairy as a primary need, mainly because Kenya is actually the biggest dairy producer in Africa, of course, outside South Africa. So it's a big a subsector. In fact, it's the biggest subsector inside the agricultural industry. And so addressing that was addressing the needs of very many people who are actually 2 million smallholder dairy farmers in Kenya. Oh, wow. I didn't realize the scale of that. Before we talk about how you solving those, and in particular, the credit side, can we stay on the founding story a little bit? Because I'm, I'm quite interested. How did you pull the team together? Because you've got a big team there working with you. What was involved in that in, in building out the business? So the first part was selling the vision to a few friends or people who I thought had some knowledge, especially in areas that uh, we needed some expertise in order to make this work. And so I reached out to my technical co-founder, uh, Mr. Jackson Maniki, and uh, actually sold to him the vision. At that time, I didn't tell him everything. I just told him in part what I was looking at and reached out to several other tech people. And uh, as luck would have it, Jackson came through, interested in helping to develop the solution. Then I reached out to a few friends with some financial skills, some with HR skills, and uh, one also in uh, digital skills. And within a short time, we had around four, five people who were part of the team. But interesting enough, one of the people I reached out to, Mr. Joseph, who is now a sales manager, I didn't know him at all. And uh, around nine months into the company, I got his contact and uh, sold to him the vision and uh, he liked it. I say this because in Africa, it's not easy to get uh, seed funding. You must actually go through the ideation and start getting some results before the investor could be interested. And so with very little cash flow, you need to balance getting good skills, but people who are able to sacrifice the need for certain packs and salaries uh, by selling to them your vision. And so these five people joined me in starting the company. They played their part to what we have as Mifugo. Nice to say that we are now 28 uh, staff and two years ago, we were only five. So a quite commendable feat. Yeah, impressive growth. And I'm sure that your your vision has helped because it's such a, an, an empowering vision for the people involved, but for the country as a whole. 
you talk about smart agriculture. What does that mean and, and how are you bringing that to, to the people? So, as I said, Kenyans and I think Africa, we are primarily smallholder farmers. Someone who has between one and six dairy cows, she grazes it in, say, a quarter of an acre or less. And then so reaching out to the smallholder farmers, we realize that they are primarily traditional farmers. They keep very traditional or local breeds of cattle, which produce very little milk, maybe half a liter of milk, maybe one liter of milk per day. They use mainly traditional ways of AI. And what they grow as feed also is standard grass and basic, basic feed or dry fodder for the animals. And so the first thing was to introduce an enabling environment that these people could have a cultural shift from traditional dairy farming to commercial dairy farming, producing enough for you to be able to sell and get a return that can help you in your household needs, can help you in school fees, nutritional needs, and the rest. And so smart agriculture means using technology as an enabler in agriculture in order to increase the dairy production. And this enabler can be anything from record keeping, using an application so that you know when your production is going down or when your production is increasing, or using a smart cow caller so that you get data insights when your cow is having, say, a high body temperature or your cow has not been moving. Or it could be even using sensors. If you go towards crops where you get to know the fertility level or salinity levels of the soil so as to know what you can grow and what can progress well. Smart agriculture means a combination of data, sensors, enabling tools that when put together in an ecosystem of a dairy value chain, the farmer then can say, I have had a 50% increase in my milk productivity or I have had a reduction in my calving period of the cow from let's say 500 days to 200 days. Simply put is how do we use technology to make the farmer realize more productivity? One of the hurdles to that would obviously be the cost. And that's where your cow loans come in. So if we start talking about loans again, you help farmers to finance purchases of more productive cattle breeds and that sort of things through your cow loan. So can you maybe talk to us a little bit about what a cow loan is? And I guess rural settings, small clients spread across great distances where logistics are tricky. So how do you bring those cow loans to market? A cow loan, first and foremost, means that you're not giving the money per se, but you're giving a cow and the value of that cow will be repaid over a period of 12 months. This was necessitated by us interacting with the farmers and doing a survey and around 60% of them still keep local breeds. And I said before that these local breeds only produce, say, one liter of milk per day. And so the irony is that a farmer would actually be keeping five or seven heads of cattle, all local breeds, and combined total of these would only be producing around three liters of milk. And so we step in and reason that, why don't you keep only one or two cows and each of them producing, say, eight liters of milk, and you have a combined total of around 16 liters of milk, you're able to sell this milk to the dairy cooperatives or to the informal markets and get, say, something like $5 that helps you towards your household needs. But the second problem was that these farmers do not have a credit history. These farmers do not have any form of security that a mainstream financial institution would take as collateral and advance to them the loan. If at all they do it, only give them the money, not help them 
in the selection of the breed and actual cow that fits their needs, especially uh, looking at environmental relations between where you buy the cow and where it's going to be domiciled. And so Mifugo steps in to first and foremost identify your dairy experience. Are you a new farmer? Do you have five years in ex- of experience? Is it experience in taking care of a local breed of cow, which is very different from an exotic breed of cow in terms of nutritional needs and care? After assessing that, then we know the best fit or ty- type of cow, say a crossbreed, would be good for you in your first stage, which would maybe produce eight to 10 liters of milk. And then is to identify this cow. So we go out and identify the right cow for you. We have a veterinary doctor who inspects this cow to make sure that it's healthy, to make sure that its history is good, uh, to make sure that both health and reproductive traits of this cow would actually be beneficial on the long term and you're actually getting the right cow. And we deliver this cow to your homestead. And so our brand has been built not only as a financing arm of the dairy loan, but a brand that takes care of all these nitty gritty issues, which are very important in a farmer taking care of his cow. We also make sure that you have enough feed. So you must be growing some feed in your area or be able to afford commercial feeds because buying feeds is very expensive for them. It takes up around 40 to 50%. But if you're growing uh, some of this feed, then it reduces the cost to around 30%. And then we offer training and capacity building sessions every month to make sure that there is uh, knowledge dissemination, knowledge transfer, peer-to-peer exchange, and uh, farmer experiences they can share with their fellow farmers. They can ask a veterinary doctor any questions. For example, when a cow is nearly calving, then our veterinary doctor will help them to do what's necessary so that they can have a successful calving because between 10 and 20% of all cows uh, usually lead to calf mortality uh, just because of farmer ignorance and lack of knowledge. And so we support them through their entire journey. And this we cannot do alone. And so we introduce different partners to these farmers. Uh, For example, vaccination programs. For example, uh, an East Coast fever vaccination would be something like $18. And we go out to talk to these people who can give uh, at a discounted price. We introduce feed companies to them, agrovets who whenever they are having some discounts can help. And that's how we address uh, the holistic uh, value chain. Yeah, so a complete 360 support. And it's great to hear. Obviously, that helps protect the security, as it were, in your loan, but also just really underlines that credit for good message where it's building up these income streams, these better ways of doing business, really wrap around care for, for the marketplace to release these funds into the economy, into these people's pockets which is a, a fantastic message to hear. One thing I do want to touch on, because obviously I said in the, in the intro, we've done some work together through Confirm You. I know you also do micro loans of a, a more traditional sort. You do still do some credit checks. You still need to look at the risk of consumers. And as you said, typically these are consumers with very little credit footprint uh, when they come to you the first time. So can you maybe talk about how you do look for risk, how you evaluate a loan, how you decide maybe on affordability as well uh, before issuing credit to one of your borrowers? Okay. Our credit assessment includes looking at, of course, as I said, the primary income of this farmer. What does he do? Is he only a dairy farmer? Does he do mixed farming? What is his daily income? What is his monthly income? How does he receive his payment per day or is a payment that comes on a weekly basis or is it on a monthly basis? Interesting enough, in a survey that we conducted, more of a KYC, we realized that there is no exclusive farmer in Kenya, especially amongst the smallholder farmers. And so a dairy farmer would also be, say, a shopkeeper. A dairy farmer would also be having 10 cows and he's also a teacher. 
And a dairy farmer would also have three cows and is selling cereals in the local market. And so when we introduced the micro loans, it was primarily to support these farmers in their dairy needs. And uh, the dairy needs here means that in case the cow was sick, and this is more of an incidental or emergency, and they don't have money, they would uh, get this micro loan from, from us and pay for the veterinary doctor's services. And so that's how we introduced the micro loans to address the just-in-time dairy needs of the farmer. However, we also realized because this farmer has a secondary, or you'd call it primary, income activity, say selling cereals in the market, they would sometimes take this money and divert it as working capital to buy their stock for the market. And so by diverting this money, then it was compromising the venture, the dairy venture, so you're not able to actually purchase what you had intended for the dairy cow. And so we introduced the micro loan not only for the dairy needs, but also for supplemental working capital needs for whichever other income activity this farmer is involved in so that they can actually be able to support both ventures. And what we realize is that some of the challenges our smallholder farmers have are very cultural. One needs to understand how does the, the smallholder farmer think? Is he going to receive a $20 loan and take it to the dairy need or his cereal business? Or is he going to go to the local pub and drink half of it? And so understanding the farmer was going to help us address his need better. And so we were very lucky to partner with ConfirmU which helps us in the psychometric credit rating of a farmer. And in ConfirmU, it was not only doing the mainstream assessment, which of course we do traditionally, but was looking deeper into the behavioral traits of this farmer and how it relates to a possible financial risk, whether he's likely to default on his loan. And this is especially engineers of confirm you because it is the psychological mind of the farmer that we have or we continue to have challenges in understanding and such a model combined with our standard credit assessment has seen us able to understand the farmers much better reduce the risk when we are lending and of course then help us to expand our operations to other regions because we have a tool that can help us understand the farmer even before we start lending to him. Alan, it's great to hear. And you talked about expanding to other regions. How are you spreading through the larger Kenyan market? So uh, 12 months ago, we were in four counties. In the last 12 months, we have expanded into another four counties. And by uh, mid-2023, we would like to be in 15 counties. Definitely, there has been a slowdown because of COVID. We also have macroeconomic issues, high unemployment rates high inflation, uh, but we are very, very positive that now more than ever, with very high unemployment rates, especially amongst our youth, and of course, also with more people looking at other alternative ways of getting income for their family, we are positive that we'll be able to manage uh, this growth and achieve it. Yeah, and it sounds perfectly designed for that because there must be people that are sitting there, you know, would like the secondary income, but maybe a little bit nervous. And now you've got that that full service where they can go to someone they trust. They can get some financing to get the right cattle, some help to actually source the cow itself, some support in, in the veterinary care and, and working the farm. It just makes it far more possible for people to move into into that direction with your purpose-driven approach. Have you got some good stories of, of how you've been able to make a positive impact? Oh, yes. We've got very many stories. We've got a woman who is physically challenged. 
and is unable to move around. And she started a small food business and for one reason or another was never never able to get credit from uh, a bank or any other financial institution because they deemed her as a high risk. And we stepped in to support her with a micro loan. And now she's grown her business 300%. Very, very powerful testimony, uh, which is on video and a very excited woman indeed. We have uh, several people, just to mention one lady also who had a cow and uh, was giving her one liter of milk and uh, we convinced her to sell it. And she topped up that money for us to finance and get her cow. And now she enjoys 17 liters of milk every day. Now, the beauty of this is immediately after the cow calved down, it was again pregnant within two months. And so I think in the next three months, she would again be enjoying a second calf from the original cow that uh, we helped her to get. We've seen also someone who, uh, when he started with us, he had only five cows and he's grown his dairy venture. And now it has around 14 cows. So some pretty good and beautiful success stories. The biggest, of course, being that uh, in one group, we were able to, in one day, finance around 40 dairy cows that were distributed to various group members. And again, not forgetting that Mifugo directly answers to several SDG goals, reduction of poverty, decent working, increasing and improving on inequality amongst women, because actually 65% of all our customers are women, uh, 20% are youth. Yeah, Alan, sometimes credit gets a bad name and there's over lending and predatory lending. But I think these stories are just a fantastic example of how credit should work and how it can bring about positive change. So it's really awesome to to hear the impact and the way that you support that, not just from day one and alone, but throughout uh, the journey. I'm sure people listening today are going to hear that and also be inspired. If people want to learn more about MyFugo, people maybe want to contact you, where's the best place for them to find out more about you and maybe to get into contact? So, of course, the best place is always to follow us on our social media channels. We are always updating. And so you can find us basically Mifugo. That's M-Y-F-U-G-O. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, on Twitter, and uh, on LinkedIn. Facebook, of course, being the most active because we engage with our farmers a lot. And it's a platform that they love. Uh, we have our website, www.mifugo.com. And uh, definitely an email, info at mifugo.com. We are always happy to work with partners and uh, looking forward to also expanding to more regions to work with more farmers, farmer cooperatives, input suppliers, even technology specialists, all into an aggregated and holistic technology-based uh, value chain in order to support the dairy farmer. Uh, and I wish you great success with that. Alan, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on. Thank you very much again, especially keeping you so late on your weekend. Thank you so much, Brendan. Thank you. And thank you all for listening. If you enjoyed that, please do rate and review on your preferred podcast platform and share widely, including on LinkedIn. And while you're there, send me a connection request. The show is written and recorded by myself, Brendan LaGrange in Brighton, England, and edited with assistance by Kane Hunter. Show music is by I Am Wake, and you can find full written transcripts now in several languages, show notes, and more content at www.howtolendmoneytostrangers.show. And I'll see you again next Thursday. <laughs>